Well, good evening, everyone. Today is September 12th, 2023, and I am Dr. Ella Thorpe with Tustin Longevity. This is our uh, TLC Health Freedom uh, Tribe, and we meet uh, once a week uh, at six o'clock uh, with the goal uh, that we will take your questions. Either they will be email questions or they will be on the YouTube uh, live chat for those who are attending live. And uh, our goal is, is to just have an open question uh, and answer. This is not meant to be personal medical advice. This is for educational purposes only. And we are a group of 10 healthcare providers here at Tustin Longevity Center. We do uh, standard medical uh, uh, practice with the additional uh, functional integrative backgrounds that we each have. Uh, today is Tuesday, the second Tuesday of the month, and we have our uh, clinicians um, meeting in which we shut everything down and we get together to discuss our um, articles of scientific articles, commentaries, um, important information on healthcare. We do case studies and uh, we all have an opportunity to share and look at our uh, recommendations and our patient cases. So it is a um, uh, integrative uh, and grand rounds kind of continuing uh, functional education and standard medical education. Today's meeting was very informative. Uh, we are continuing to grow as a clinic, and uh, the practitioners are sharing and growing together. We are uh, not um, necessarily able to answer every question. We can tell you approaches and guidelines. Uh, we are not trying to be a specialist in every area. We are functional uh, doctors with uh, a uh, functional approach, and then we bring in standard medical uh, advice where it's uh, appropriate and treatment protocols uh, according to standard of care where appropriate. So uh, I'm tired because, you know, I've been up since uh, before dawn, 530, and I have not really had a minute of one free break. So I'm not sure I'm going to make it the whole hour, but I will do my best. Last week was very busy as well. And uh, I have some questions that were left off after last week. And then I have quite a few questions on this one as well. I do not think I'm going to get through them all, but I'll do my best. Again, I want to look at the um, uh, live questions here. And we'll start with our live questions. Uh, the first one I have is uh, from Frank. And he asks the question, what causes gallbladder stones? How can you get rid of them? Well, <clears throat> we are not sure. I don't know that anyone has the answer. Uh, the gallbladder, of course, is a sac that is right underneath your liver, and it will collect bile that's produced from the liver, which is processing old red blood cell uh, material, and that material. Uh, is condensed into a thing called bile and uh, accumulated in the sac there. When uh, a fatty meal comes down into the stomach and then into the intestine, the beginning duodenum, uh, that fat needs to be, uh, so to say, packaged, emulsified for later absorption. Fat and water does not mix. And so the bile works as kind of like a helpful digestive aid in our getting the healthy fats that we need absorbed. And then the question is, um, why would a stone start falling, uh, you know, developing there? All kinds of concepts and ideas are there. If there was some bacteria that came up into the gallbladder, uh, the uh, uh, body uh, very often will try and seal it off. Um, there can be um, minerals that are um, ionized and collect. And so the body starts uh, putting a uh, protection, so to say, around crystals or foreign material or dangerous material pathogens 
to seal them off. Uh, and then there's the question of, is the wall of the little sack inflamed? Does the wall itself have polyps in it? Does the wall have one big stone forming in it? Or does it have many little stones in it? And uh, the answer is we don't know. But we do know that digestion is being challenged over the past 50 years or so with this low fat, no fat, um, bad advice that we were given by centralized government recommendations from the McGowan and the American Dietetic um, Advisory Council that was formed in 1980 as a result of this condemnation of saturated fats. And with that, uh, we started getting more and more uh, foods that are uh, Franken foods is what they're called, um, uh, cereals, uh, Count Dracula, Choco, Cocoa Puffs, and, and Lucky Charms, and dyes, and colors, and genetic modification of the grains, and glyphosation. Uh, uh, glyphosate is a pesticide that has been intercalated into the DNA of some uh, grains, and we're uh, desiccating, uh, using as a desiccant a glyphosate pesticide spray right before harvest that amplifies the exposure to that um, pesticide, insecticide. All these foreign materials are putting a strain on the digestive system. The older you get, um, the harder it is to digest. Um, and these high sugar, high starch, high fructose corn syrup laden drinks that we drink and foods that we eat and syrups and salad dressings all of these things are suppressing the immune system, so the sugar suppresses it. The um, hydrogenated fats that are in the packaged foods are creating these uh, very foreign uh, molecular fatty acids uh, that are um, not possible to be broken down, and it puts the function of digestion into a, a tizzy, a hyperdrive, and the a uh, general theme is that there's lack of production of healthy proteolytic and lipolytic as well as hydrochloric acid. And so we're getting maldigestion and putting a strain and that gallbladder is strained then with all this uh, material coming at us. We're seeing all kinds of uh, chronic metabolic uh, weird diseases and we're starting to see it tremendously uh, get uh, penetration into the younger age groups, even children, we're seeing more fatty liver from the sugar drinks and apple juice and the orange juice in the kids. All this is limiting the uh, function of the liver and that bile production and bile salts are being stressed. And so we believe it has something to do with that uh, uh, strain that we're putting on our liver with this horrible of cheap fast food junk food, quick get it food, uh, restaurant food that we're all being uh, busy bodied and rushed into eating instead of a nice uh, uh, old fashioned meal at the table uh, prepared with real meat or real fish or real chicken or real pork or real shrimp, crab or lobster, all real food with a real cooked vegetable and uh, real simple so condiments like salt um, or pepper, and then leaving it as a simplistic thing like that. No, we've got to have entertainment with every meal, and it's marketed and modified and jacked up, you might say, into some horrible concoction that's stressing our liver. So we believe that uh, bile salts are under attack creating chronic inflammation in the system. And that goes up into the uh, gallbladder sac and that creates low grade inflammation, the immune system trying to suppress it. Um, and that's probably where it is. So what would I do? I would say eat real food, eat uh, slow and uh, slow down and under a more comfortable environment and supportive at home with uh, homemade meals and um, probably use a digestive enzyme 
we use orthomolecular's orthodigestime, or we call it here uh, digestime. And that reminds me, uh, I didn't have time to eat because I have not had a break since uh, 6 o'clock in the morning. And therefore, all I had time to eat was a protein bar today. So I had two protein bars. That's it. So now I'm taking my digestive enzymes so I don't get trouble. So that's the thought on that, Frank. Hopefully that gives you an idea. Let's go to some of these questions now. Um, last week, um, I didn't get to Adriana. She said I was recently hospitalized with a diverticulitis infection. That's an infection of the outpouching of the um, colon. The colon has peristalsis through the sac in the body and you can get these little nipples blown out like a bleb on a tire and it can get uh, infected. And she was given antibiotics, she says. I was not given much guidance besides to seek the help of a GI doctor. Uh, the doctor at the hospital did not provide me with much feedback despite my many questions. I want to ensure I never experience this again. What would you suggest to someone in my situation? Thank you in advance for your help and wisdom. Well, we have to ask the question, what would blow out the side of a tube that is under pressure moving the bowel forward for expulsion? And so you have to talk about the membrane lining of that tube. And that membrane is made of elastin and collagen. And you're being frightened from eating uh, meat, fish, chicken, turkey, beef. And collagen does not come from any plant food at all. It only comes from animal food. And so by eating less meat, fish, chicken, turkey, beef, eggs, uh, shrimp, uh, lobster, crab, um, you are having problem with that. Plus, um, you need vitamin C. We don't make vitamin C. That helps with the locking position of the interlocking of the structure of the collagen elastin webbing there. And you need minerals. Um, there's, there's a lot more to it. But essentially, if you're not eating any animal food, you can get pulling apart and then if you have pressure, it's going to separate and allow a blowout of one of these little nipples. So what do we recommend? I recommend um, for uh, diverticula, if it's just a, a blob diverticula, it's not inflamed. That's when you add the word itis. So you would say a diverticula. Can, uh, the little blowout blob can become inflamed and turn into a diverticulitis. That can rupture ultimately and then have bowel uh, uh, toxins, waste spill into the internal cavity of the abdominal cavity and that's sepsis and that could kill you. So um, drinking enough water, uh, eating uh, the healthy, simple menu, have your fish day, have your chicken day, have your steak day, have your uh, pork day, have your egg day, and then rotate your diet um, and eat a simple one menu day because the less complex your diet, uh, conversely, the more simple your diet, the less stress you put on all the immune system lining your gut and about 70, 80% of your gut associated lymphoid tissue lines your gut all the way through it to protect it so that there's no breaching or break through that barrier from the outside world into your internal body. Plus, we want enough water for peristalsis and uh, <clears throat> exchange of uh, healthy as well as removal of waste material throughout our body. Uh, our probiotics, our good, healthy bacteria, our beneficial bacteria diminish with aging and the more challenging, wild, spicy, crazy variety that we stress our uh, gut with and the good bacteria become more diminished. 
they are part and parcel of help maintaining the defense wall of the uh, gut barrier. And what we have to do then is take probiotics um, as we age, especially the more we're doing microbiome um, uh, assessment of the variety of the hundreds of thousands of species of uh, uh, flora that live in our gut, we're learning that there are groups uh, and families that seem to be there in health and go away with illness. One of those is uh, clearly identified as bifidobacteria. So bifidobacteria, lactobacillus, um, these are uh, very good items to make sure they're included in your uh, probiotic. We use um, a probiotic uh, from the orthomolecular uh, uh, people who really provide only to medical doctors. And that way, when we do interventions on people post-infection or having inflammatory bowel disorders, uh, we can get stool samples and we can see the clinical impact of using these things so that we're not wasting our time or the money and time of our patients. So you have to eat to make a strong construction wall of your colon, and that comes from animal products. You have to uh, take uh, probiotics. You have to drink water. You have to move. Exercise is very um, much associated with healthy bowel performance. So those are the things that I would say, Andrea, uh, that need to be addressed. And I would see a functional doctor and work on that. Hopefully that helps you. Carol asks a question. Have you seen on Netflix the documentary, documentary Live to 100, Secrets of the Blue Zones? I've observed that it is promoting eating no meat. Very interesting. I'd love to get your feedback. Thank you so much. Well, I can tell you that there are big arguments uh, regarding that fact. And in fact, uh, there are those that are challenging that uh, these blue zones do in fact um, eat um, animal products. Uh, there is uh, no definitive science identifying that a plant-based only diet is the correct diet uh, alone to eat. Um, I think there's a, a pressure on uh, industry in the farming uh, big agribusiness to uh, push us to eat these high carbohydrate immune suppressing genetically modified foods that are orally pleasing and sa satisfying as far as a taste, but they're not structurally, we're not composed of uh, grains and vegetables. We'll get nutrient uh, from them and minerals, but structurally compare liver or beef or an egg or chicken or fish, uh, it's hands down uh, the nutrient density and uh, complete need is far better met by having fish or eggs or chicken or pork or meat and these kind of uh, things or crustaceans. Um, there is uh, big industry financing uh, many of these uh, so-called documentaries. Uh, I have not seen that video. Uh, the, there are books out there like the China study and again, it's more error by omission rather than outright um, deceptive lies. So no, I do not buy that at all, Carol. And uh, uh, plant-based diets um, have to uh, be really fraught with care to get the proper uh, fats and to get the proper nutrients, minerals, B12, many others, essential fats. So no, uh, you're not going to, to make it to 100 on a plant-based only diet. Besides, these are epidemiological studies. Uh, the lowest level probably, um, or near lowest level of evidence is epidemiology, um, as opposed to randomized controlled trials and, and uh, the like, which are really uh, good science. People will forget what they ate 
um, earlier on the same day, let alone uh, what they ate 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And you can forestall uh, disease uh, out outbreaks by just, you know, having one piece of fish, you know, every two weeks uh, or an egg, you know, uh, once a week, you can prevent a lot of disease. So uh, I'm doubtful of that, Carol. Chris asked the question, my two-year-old granddaughter is undergoing chemotherapy for a benign tumor located on her spinal cord. The surgeon tried to remove the tumor in January, but it started growing back in just three months' time. Do you have any supplements or dietary suggestions for her? Thank you for all you do in your ministry. Chris, you know, um, that's a, a question that um, we want you to be sure that uh, you're under the care of specialists, and we certainly are not representing that we can manage or treat cancer. It's only licensed for oncologists to do that here in California. But regarding what stimulates a tumor or any growth or even fat to grow in a human being is a high carbohydrate diet. Now, I'm telling you, Americans uh, don't realize how much carbs they're eating and feeding their children because we're seeing an epidemic of disease, obesity, diabetes, and liver uh, damage, even liver transplants in young people and adolescents today, because no one wants to admit that they are giving them, um, you know, uh, goldfish chips to eat, and Doritos, and French fries, and a soda pop, and orange juice, and apple juice, and uh, sugary jello and a piece of cake and cookies and pizza and 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 so we are harming our children and the carbohydrates make a hormone come out called insulin insulin is probably one of the biggest growth promoting uh, hormones in the human body that promotes fat uh, to grow that promotes thickening of the uh, middle lining of the arteries to make hard, stiff, thick uh, blood vessel walls and to make a tumor to grow. Uh, so uh, if you've ever seen someone have around their neck where their, their uh, collar is rubbing them all the time and it looks like it's dried, darker skin or you see skin tags there, you know that person is eating uh, too many carbs because insulin will promote skin thickening at tiny microscopic areas of minor trauma and scratching and skin tags to form. We're seeing this in children today or in between their legs where their thighs rub together, we'll see the darkening of the skin and the skin tags grow or under the arms and the skin tags grow. So uh, this is uh, what I would start by uh, sharing with you uh, to look at uh, research and uh, articles by a Dr. Uh, Thomas Seafree, um, and that is spelled um, S-E-Y-F-R-I-E-D, PhD, Dr. Thomas Seafried, and he wrote a book called, um, well, he has a movie on YouTube called Cancer as a Mitochondrial Metabolic Disease. And um, these um, abnormal growths all behave similarly. So I would listen to that. I would also listen to Dr. Jason Fung, um, Intermittent Fasting is Medicine, or Dr. Robert Lustig, L-U-S-T-I-G. Uh, he's a pediatric endocrinologist who also is going to um, tell you if you watch Sugar, the Bitter Truth, how high fructose corn syrup is just horrific in what it is doing to the young children today, destroying their immune system with the sugars, promoting fat and promoting uh, tumor growth and diabetes and so forth and liver transplants. So hopefully that helps you, Chris, to get started. Cynthia said, hello, Dr. Rita, I'd like to get your opinion on ovarian cysts. In April, an ultrasound showed a simple cyst on my ovary. Last week, I had a follow-up ultrasound, and it shows a complex cyst measuring 4.1 centimeters with a single thin septation. 
Is this something to be concerned about? Yes. Is there anything that can be done to treat it naturally? Um, so you have to follow up with your gynecologist or whoever is doing this. Uh, we would want your, um, uh, you to be on a very low carb because insulin stimulates polycystic ovarian syndrome, um, hyperinsulinemia. That's the high insulin growth hormone stimulation of the high carbohydrate diet. And the best thing you could probably do is become a carnivore for four to six months and take systemic enzymes like vascuzymes, systemic enzymes on an empty stomach five twice a day and uh, uh, progesterone cycle. Uh, progesterone helps uh, uh, quiet down the hormones uh, in a woman's body. And then uh, uh, if a uh, cyst in the ovary starts to get complex, the risk of it becoming cancerous is more concerning. So don't fool around with this. Follow up with your doctor and uh, watch those same videos I told you about on uh, hyperinsulinemia and the cysts and polycystic ovarian syndrome is clearly associated uh, with a rise of the high sugar diet of the American girls today. And the same thing she went on to say, an ultrasound showed the fibroid in the posterior aspect. Um, is there anything I can do that? And the answer is, it's the same growth promoting impact of insulin on our, uh, everyone thinks they are on a good diet. Everyone thinks they don't eat too many carbs. Yet chronic disease, diabetes, obesity, hypertension, thickened blood vessels, tumors, polyps, benign or cancerous or otherwise are all on the rise. So we're deceiving ourselves, ladies and gentlemen. We are deceiving ourselves. And just having one less cookie a week or uh, avoiding cookies and thinking you can have a sugared yogurt, whatever it is, we are addicted to carbs. We have to break that cruel relationship and deal with it. And then the last one on this page is from Denise. Hi, Dr. Ellathorpe. Thank you for taking my question. And God bless you for taking time out of your busy schedule each week for us. Thank you. Mom is 93 and complains of hissing noises in her ears. Is that a common symptom of Alzheimer's or should she be seen by an ear specialist? Yes, it is. And most of us, if you take a moment, you probably can hear a high pitched tone the older you get. We are all aging and drying out and stiffening. And that includes uh, the inner aspect of our ears and the um, uh, vessel, even the vessel walls. We don't have quite the answer, but the thing that helps slow it down is the healthy lifestyle, enough water, exercise, EDTA chelation therapy to improve the microcirculation, eating the healthy fats and proteins that make the vessels and the tissues soft and uh, um, insulated. And the high carbohydrate diet turns us into rock candy and a uh, fat growing, polyp growing, tumor growing, hardening artery, kinky, clinky little thing. <laughs> so uh, I would do chelation therapy also as well. All right, so we did this one. Let's see on our live chat. Oh, we've got more there. Okay, so um, Rose has asked the question, what do you recommend for lowering cholesterol without a prescription? Uh, a low-carb diet. Are you all hearing a theme over and over and over again? A low-carb diet, a low-carb diet, a low-fruit sugar diet, a low-fruit sugar diet. We are eating so much... Uh, 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 carbohydrates, uh, we are stimulating uh, insulin, it's stimulating fat storage, um, it is creating uh, clogging of the vessels, choking out the cell metabolism, creating inflammatory screams and signals that the liver picks up, the liver hears and sees these fragments uh, called cytokines, and then the liver will churn out more cholesterol, even if you don't eat any cholesterol, trying to find that tissue to repair the injury in the side of the cell in your body. You can't get away from it. We are made, and your cell membranes, all your trillions of them, especially your nerves, need lots of cholesterol. This whole concept of cholesterol 
drugging and cholesterol as the co cause of the problem. The ignorance is what caused the problem. They knew this answer. How did I know it when even before I went to medical school? Men knew this back in the 1950s and, and 40s and 60s because I heard it argued at the uh, food research lab in Armour Food when I was a child how they were aghast um, at the results of the McGowan Senate hearing on um, cholesterol as a uh, saturated fat causing heart disease. What in the heck is government doing in healthcare? Get us out, get us out of that, get out of our business. And they suppressed the researchers that were supplying uh, valid scientific information. Does that sound like censorship? Yes, yeah, called censorship. And these uh, doctors were silenced and only the uh, anti-cholesterol, low-fat, uh, grain-producing, uh, financed by the um, grain industries, the food industries uh, for the uh, grains, got the seat at the table at that Congress uh, report. There's a whole criminal story about the suppression of it. And we've gone through 50 years of their damaging uh, impact on us. And now they retract very silently. The American Heart Association has retracted since 2015, but you haven't heard about it because they are wrong. They lied and the doctors went along with it for a cheap trick of money for financing rather than take care of their dear patients. So that's how you lower it. Now, another way, Rose, is to uh, look at your thyroid function just today in our clinical meeting, Dr. Merrick was talking about a patient who had high cholesterol, hyperlipidemia. And again, that's from a high carb diet. And she put her patient on a lower carb diet. And then she also gave the patient some natural thyroid medication, not the levothyroxine, which is a precursor. Gave her the real natural thyroid, uh, NP thyroid. Gave her, I think, about a grain, which is a very modest dose. That patient had such a dramatic drop in the cholesterol and the LDL. But I don't care about the total cholesterol or LDL. I care about the triglycerides, which come from the high sugar, high starch, high carbohydrate consumption, and the HDL, high density uh, cholesterol from your exercise. So if you have triglycerides that are equal, to your exercise um, HDL number. So if your HDL is 60, then your triglycerides should be 60 or less. And, and it was a beautiful thing, so maybe some thyroid. Brian says, um, Doc, what do you think about the fruit in store now? It rotens too quickly. Uh, he also says, what, what is your take uh, glycine as a good supplement? I don't know what I'm going to say about uh, the fruit rotting too quickly. Uh, usually they are picked pre-ripened. Then they do chemical argon gas um, stimulation of them. Uh, and then um, the uh, uh, fruit is then delivered. Um, they may have not uh, gassed them early enough. I don't know. But we never as a people had fruit available year long. That was only a seasonal treat and uh, usually only showed up in the fall. It wasn't something you had all year long. You couldn't get berries all year long. You couldn't get bananas ever. Uh, it, it, that would only be something you could get if you were in the tropical zones. So we are a spoiled, overeating, sugar, high fructose corn syrup, uh, consuming, um, addicted set of people, and it's uh, TV, news media marketed to so that we get fat, sick, and chronic disease, and we make a ton of money for the health care uh, system that rapes us, doesn't have time to teach a poor lady about her diverticulitis, just wants a paycheck and, and jam in as many patients a day. I'm sick of my uh, colleagues for the most part. I'm so ashamed of my profession. But does that answer your question, Brian? Oh, anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, he had another one. Do you think NMM is safe and effective? Um, 
Oh, and what about glycine? I'm going to say, look at if you're eating enough protein, you don't need to worry about glycine. If you're eating a plant-based uh, main diet, if uh, you know 60 plus percent of your diet is plant stuff, yeah, then you better start worrying about it. Like all vegetarians, vegans have to worry about it. So I never, never worry about it. I ate, I eat liver maybe once a week, twice a week. I eat a steak. Uh, once or twice uh, a week. Um, I eat a rich, heavy protein diet, very low plants. So I'm mostly carnivore. I never worry about glycine. Uh, and so I don't think you need to take it if you eat a healthy uh, uh, diet. And then finally, same for NMN. We can come up with all these uh, specialty uh, uh, supplements and specialty uh, metabolites, um, uh, agonists, and look at if you exercise, eat a rich, healthy, natural, uh, home cooked meal uh, with your protein in it. Uh, don't eat late. Um, very low carb. Fast intermittently. Uh, stay involved socially and get to bed on time and heal. I don't think you need these things um, at all. Uh, but I am not right off the top of my head after working 12 full hours. Uh, remembering what NMN is. I was just going to watch a YouTube before I got on today because I constantly study. And uh, it was on NMN and, uh, I don't know, neutrosamine, something or other. I got to look into it, Brian, to be honest. Sean the Baptist, praise the Lord. Hi, Sean. Uh, what would you recommend for drinking water filtration? Well, I use uh, the uh, InfoWars um, site where I ordered my Alexa Pure Berkey uh, water filter, and I have it right here. I'm looking at it right now. I have it at home, and that's what I feel good about, and I got extra filters. I think uh, the standard large size one will serve about 10,000 gallons, so that's what I used, Sean the Baptist. All right, Joanna says, uh, did I hear you say in a previous Q&A that you do not recommend a DNC following an endometrial biopsy which came back negative? No, I, I'm not saying that. It, it depends on the situation, Joanne. So if you have, uh, uh, I don't know your age, I don't know if you're on enough progesterone, I don't know what your progesterone level is, I don't know how thick the lining was. I don't know if you have continual spotting. So all these things need to be worked together by the doctor who's managing you. And a DNC uh, may not be needed if uh, it's marginal, but certainly if the lining is thick, maybe it would be wise to get a, a dilation and curatage, just clean out the lining on the inside of the uterus. So no, uh, Joanne, I'm not saying you don't do that at all. Uh, Brian goes on to say, thank you. One more. Okay, Brian. I'm confused about when to eat. I work third shifts, so I eat in the mornings, then go to sleep. So, Brian, um, if you work third shift, that's usually 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. Um, my suggestion to you would be to come home after work and go to bed and amplify your healing and uh, uh, time and uh, get rest right away. And when you wake up uh, at uh, two in the afternoon or three, that's when you should eat, eat before 6 p.m. before you go to work at 7 p.m. That's uh, trying to prevent the shift related risk of increased disease, you know, it is associated with shift workers to have more chronic medical problems and shorter lifespans because of the stress of the timing of the sleep, because you're going against the planet day and night cycle. But you can modify that a lot if you will not eat after you get home in the morning and just go right to bed and then wake up uh, at two and then eat then. That modifies a lot of those risk factors. Okay, Christina says, hello, Dr. Rita. 
I've tried fasting lately, but start to feel weird. Sweaty, shaky, sometimes heart palpitations. I'm thinking low blood sugar. Thoughts, thank you. Christina, this is probably withdrawal. That's exactly the symptoms you get from withdrawal. So you have to work at it bit by bit so that if you eat uh, something, let's say you're getting those feelings, then have a, a hard boiled egg or take a tablespoon of olive oil. Now, it's possible that it could be low blood sugar. Again, I don't know who you are or what your unique situation is or if you have any comorbidities or if you have uh, already um, uh, other uh, uh, problems like being on medications that would aggravate uh, your blood sugar. But the, the thing is, we are addicted and they made us addicted through their TV pharmaceutical marketing uh, of uh, making food a glorious, uh, demanding, entitled thing. You should have an explosion on your tongue every time you open up your mouth. And that's just not the way mankind has been. So uh, we have lost the joy of a true celebration gathering where there are treats because we can get it any stinking time we want it. So um, we have become addicted. So when you start reducing it, your body will uh, go through withdrawal symptoms. And, and I think that's more likely what it is. But you persevere through it. A tablespoon of olive oil should solve it. A hard boiled egg uh, salted should solve it. And then just keep on knocking at it until you retrain your metabolism uh, to have less and less carbs. There are no essential carbohydrates. We don't have to have any in our diet. Uh, Doreen says, I have a stubborn infection on my eyelid after cataract surgery. I'm on my fourth round of antibiotics. What am I doing wrong? Doreen, I would want to know what your fasting blood sugar is. How high is your hemoglobin A1C? How high are your triglycerides? How high is your fasting insulin? Uh, you could do the Argentan silver, put it, uh, some, uh, get a spray of it and just open your eyes and spray it into your face. I have the Argentan silver. I'll just put a drop of this right into my eyes to moisten them uh, most evenings. Uh, I would do EDTA chelation. I would take high dose vitamin D uh, and get your vitamin D serum levels up to 80. I would do EDTA chelation therapy and maybe some uh, vitamin C. You have to do all these things along with zinc. Uh, so you need to see a good uh, functional doctor who can put the whole story together instead of keep on doing the same dumb thing over and over again and getting the same dumb answer. Obviously, these other things make a difference. Uh, and now let's go uh, to some of our questions for today. Uh, Rick said, uh, what is your opinion regarding testosterone replacement therapy? I'm in favor of it, if appropriate. My urologist is prescribing low doses of it, lotion form. I totally agree. It's wonderful because my numbers are low. I never felt I needed it. Otherwise, are there long-term damaging side effects? There are no issues with my prostate. Rick, um, I have been practicing medicine 42 years now. When I was a young doctor in the uh, late 70s, the, and then I went into the military, I was trained as a military physician. Men had testosterone levels e easily at 1,200, 1,400, 1,500, 1,600. And the testosterone levels I see today are absolutely dismal. And I don't buy into this fact that a lot of these young uh, uh, fellows feel that they have uh, um, no uh, desire to be a man. I think the real problem is they've eaten such a lousy, corrupted, genetically modified, oxidizing, sugar, uh, immune suppressing diet that we've burnt them out and they can't produce enough testosterone to know what it means to feel the wonderful, powerful hormone effects of testosterone. And I've been using testosterone replacement therapy on men to get their testosterone levels up to 800 easily for years and years and years. I, I remember when my father died, um, uh, 
he had uh, he was not on uh, uh, testosterone, but he uh, had a serum level of around 800 on his uh, testosterone at 89 or so, whatever his age was. He was very, almost hitting his 90s uh, without any testosterone. It's just how healthy his body uh, was. And when he was a uh, younger man, I think I, he was like 60 when I became a doctor uh, or in his late 50s. Uh, he was easily 1,600 on his testosterone. So it's really sad. I'm all for testosterone therapy. And men uh, uh, have just, I've been following it and doing it 40 some years. I've had no complaints and problems or diseases from it. I'm all for it. Marilyn says, I miss TLC, nothing like it in El Paso, Texas. Where do you stand on the standard of care? I am finding that many doctors talk about standard of care when they want to do more screenings or write prescriptions for their questionable synthetic drugs. I am still looking for a doctor that is not captive to this nonsense. I have found a doctor of osteopathy like yourself, but he doesn't have the resources that your center does. You know, maybe have him, Marilyn, uh, fly out here uh, for a, a long weekend and, and shadow us and uh, become uh, associated with us. And we'd be help, ha happy to help show them our resources where we get things. I, I have, I'm not, I'm going to die and go to heaven and be the wealthiest person in the world. I, I don't need to have my wealth here. I'd rather share it with as many young uh, or otherwise doctors, nurses to see what we've done and how it, the Lord has blessed us here. So please, has, tell him that I'd be happy to have him sh come shadow us and one of our many other doctors, how each of them have been developing themselves and growing in this. You know, I started out at zero somewhere, you know, when I first started practicing as an independent doctor off of active duty. We all start somewhere. And so be tender and kind to these doctors that are boldly stepping out, trying to learn how to do the natural way uh, alongside of the safe practice of standardized uh, medical training and encourage them and, and be tolerant and share your uh, information with them, share your contacts, uh, help us network, and we'll do that uh, like that all together. Well, thank you, Marilyn. Uh, Patricia has a long one here. My 30-year-old son has been experiencing skin eruptions for two months. Uh, three on his thigh and two in his armpit. They come one at a time. They are similar looking to a spider bite as they swell up and then pop and uh, thick pus comes out. Okay, the ones on his thighs have been quite large, painful to the point of not being able to walk and at their peak look like decaying raw meat. Oh my goodness. He has had painful inflamed lymph nodes. He has been careful to make sure this has only been local and not showing symptoms of his overall health. He believes this to be a um, uh, multi-resistant staph aureus infection and does not has not been seen by a doctor because he believes that antibiotics are not the answer. He educates himself and has been using herbal supports such as raw garlic, green tea, and taking bacillus uh, subtilis uh, supplements and other probiotics along with rest, Epsom salts, and keeping them very clean, avoid sur avoiding surfing, et cetera, and using topical poultices. After the last ones were healed, he has recently gotten another one. He is very healthy, eats a mostly carnivore diet, because I was going to say the sugars are probably suppressing his immune system, and uh, follows your health protocols. His blood type is B positive. I'm very concerned and worried and hoping for your advice. Thank you for all you do. I, I would go and buy a couple of bottles of the um, Argentan silver and I would uh, put these on these sites or even spray these areas where the micro trauma, it said, you said it's under his arm and between his leg. It's always where there's tiny chronic little irritation and micro trauma that allows bacteria to get in there. So if he is carnivore and very low carb and his blood sugars are good. If that's true, uh, then make sure his vitamin D is uh, uh, getting up there. And uh, to I like keeping my patients at 80 nanograms per deciliter. And then make sure he's on vitamin C. 
and make sure he's on zinc and uh, low carb and take systemic enzymes to de decrease the inflammation. He can come in and do a walk-in high dose vitamin C, 12 and a half grams. That would be tremendous for his immune system. He can do a, a walk-in at the same time um, uh, chelation where he could do the IV EDTA chelation to improve all the microcirculation to the skin and everywhere in his body, followed by a 12 and a half gram of vitamin C right into the bloodstream. That would be tremendous for him. Take the Argentin, do all those things. But I personally believe that he should be seen by a doctor or have him come here if he's in the area, because I do think you should have a medical doctor check this um, out as well. All right, and let me put this page done. And do we have new items? Yes, we do. We have, uh, Denise says, hi, Dr. Rita, are there any physical triggers for anxiety attacks. My mom seems to get them right after eating. Any correlation to food? Yeah, yes, there definitely is. Uh, the food can be inflammatory and creating uh, bursts of these uh, neurotoxic uh, uh, kind of elements and cytokines that are picked up in the blood and the body senses the inherent uh, damage uh, that is producing. So yeah, I would have her seen by a a uh, good uh, functional doctor who knows how to do the screening for the uh, slow reacting and the immediate reacting food uh, allergens. So there's both IgE and then IgG uh, for slow reacting immunoglobulins and get them both done. Maybe do a stool. Uh, uh, find out what her blood type is. Uh, uh, minerals are calming. Magnesium is soothing. Uh, make sure she's well hydrated. And for heaven's sakes, make sure she's eating enough fat. The brain is made of fat primarily. And if you're on a low fat diet, you're all going to be anxious. You're all going to have be worry warts and you're all going to have lousy sleep. You got to eat enough fat to repair your brain. Uh, and then have her see a, a, a good doctor. D Deja. Hi, Dr. Rita. <laughs> There's a little happy face emoji. You are giving it to us straight up. <laughs> yes, maybe I am. We know it's because you truly care. And I do. Thank you for your candid honesty. God bless you. Well, how sweet of you to say it like that. Thank you. Uh, Garden Fury. Hi, Garden Fury. Uh, that man sounds like he has um, hydradenitis. Okay. Uh, superative. Yeah. So his sweat glands are getting infected. And um, the bacteria is just kind of crawling down into the uh, sweat glands. Yes, you're right. Uh, that's why I said he should go to a, do uh, a uh, medical doctor. Brian B., I took vital sign for two months but felt no effect. I'd have to know who you are and what the situation is because maintaining health, if you're generally healthy, is the goal. And how many vital sign you took take is important and why you're taking it. If you're a healthy 30 year old man, you're probably still making enough enzymes. But if you're 50, you probably aren't. Uh, so it depends on many things when to start it. I didn't take enzymes uh, regularly until I hit menopause. So there you go. And there's Grant. Howdy, Aunt Rita. Long time no talk. Hi, Grant. God bless you. Good to see you. Blessings on your sweet family in Kentucky. Say hi to your uh, grandma, my sister, for me, okay? Give my love to Sandy. All right, so um, we are at uh, 6.54, folks, and I have not had even a break to pee today, actually. I went from got here working after my workout and worked hard all the way up to the meeting, worked all the way through the meeting. And then I had back to back uh, new patients and I just uh, got online and said, I am going to end. <laughs> I'm tired folks. So I would like um, to um, do the rest of these email questions next week. And forgive me that I'm not uh, pushing it or adding another 10 minutes. I do appreciate us. Please, if this is a value, please uh, like and subscribe. Please um, 
share and recommend this to a friend if it's helpful to you. We do have um, a transcription at tlcdoctors.com and uh, therefore we would, uh, uh, Rose Upperson, yes. Thank you, Dr. Rita, see you at the perfect workout. Yes, I work out there too, uh, three times a week and Boris says, thank you. Well, to you all, I need a rest and I gotta stop talking because I'm so, so dry. God bless you. Take care. See you next week.